such a long time since I've been doing this happy to be back with you again today you know often when I do my watercolor f girls I will sketch my sketch out in a very skin tone prisma pencil one of the reasons is that it's not highly pigmented and it won't move when I'm putting watercolor over it and it also blends in with the flesh tones so it makes it really really easy for me to be able to to get that sketch out and then not have the sketch lines impeding what I'm doing and you know I'm very experienced now at doing portraits and portraiture so you know I, I get my details right you know most of the time and it's rare that I have to uh, erase what I'm doing but if I do I have a Derwent electric eraser which I use on color pencil and it works very very well or you can have kneadable erasers and they do actually erase prismas particularly particularly the ones that are not heavily pigmented like your purples and your reds uh, and your deep browns so you can see here I'm just popping those details in I am using a reference picture of my Pinterest fa uh, page um, she's a lovely fairy girl but you know I've added extra things in that aren't in that photo and I have extra wings in and I've changed her quite significantly from the original photograph I think it's all about doing uh, your own interpretation of any reference photos that you may have and that's really important in this particular case so all I want to start off here is by saying you know have a lot of fun with your sketches uh, I did <laughs> and I make them reasonably minimalistic I know where all my things are going to be and often I can see faintly the pencil through my paint so it makes it easier for me to then follow what my original sketch was and I use that um, to my advantage in this particular case I do like to then go straight in and use my flesh gouache so I use an art spectrum flesh tint gouache I like to use that as a basis because it gives me a baseline for all the rest of my flesh tones and this fairy has very pale skin so I've not completely covered her face I've essentially put the flesh tones in in the shadow areas and not so much just covered her face because with watercolor as you can see here with watercolor um, you just really have the white of the page as your white and that's really important when we go in and we start deepening those shadows around her eyes and we might change her lips and just the basic shadow kind of thing is important in this particular process so you'll see here that I'm using a, an aqua brush I actually got these recently from Eckersley's they had a sale on these aqua brushes and they were quite economical I got a set of three for about $16 and they're good quality um, aqua brushes and they've got a really large long water reservoir which I really like uh, and I'm popping in my deepening tones various tones I've got pinks I've got um, umbers I've got ochres I've got raw siennas and I just kind of use them all to my own satisfaction when I'm doing this I'm also using a Naples yellow which is you know a Naples red which is the flesh tone for schminker and of course you can see my schminker tin there so I do use that a lot when I'm doing all these details I have a lot of fun just creating my shadows first uh, I do this very gently and you have to be really careful about um, how wet your paper is so that things don't bleed so you notice that I'm not immediately painting in the hair or painting in any adjacent features like the nose or the lips I'm going to let that completely dry before I do anything with it and I'm going to keep deepening those shadows and I'll start off with deeper tones of your darks 
and then I'll kind of blend in because I'm using a beautiful Archer's 100% cotton rag um, watercolor paper it's a medium tooth but it's only 185 GSM so quite a thin Archer's paper but believe me for this sort of picture it it held up incredibly well and as you can see I've not even taped it to the board so I'm really impressed with it. I usually quite often paint this sort of thing on a block and that makes it much much easier or I tape it to a board but today I was so confident in the paper that I just left it the way it was and I'm coming up to the end of this particular little section I need to just put all these skin tones in and then darken the ones in for the neck and her bodice and her arm and then I need to completely let that dry before I do anything else that's really really important you don't want any bleeding and you want to be able to do a dry on dry technique if you're putting details in or just see what it dries out to first before you actually put your dark colors in it's really important to do that at each step in the process so now I'm starting to put the hair in and I'm putting the undertones in first I, because her face is very very dry I'm not going to have any bleeding of that dark chocolate into her flesh tones and I'll be able to butt it in quite nicely against the flesh tones to get a nice sharp edge although with the slightly rough texture of the paper that proves a little bit more difficult than if you're using a very smooth textured paper but I'm using uh, what colors am I using in this I had a lot of fun with her hair I used uh, some sepia brown some burnt umber some raw umber and some yellow ochre and I used all of those colors in her hair and a little bit of Naples yellow and I that gave me my undertones and my lights and darks and there was not a heap of detail in this although I've got some nice sort of curls and flicks throughout the piece and I just take note of where the lights coming from so the lights coming more from the right hand side and and there's a little bit of shadow on the right side of her face and less on the left and you know I just like to think well her hair's a little bit lighter on the right hand side than it is on the left and those shadows and she's got shadows coming in under her chin and behind hair and over her shoulder she's got really nice form this girl I really like the way that her arm and shoulder curve and she's got the beautiful curve of her breast as we go through that process so now I'm deepening in her dress and I'm doing that because I intend to doodle in white pen over the top so to make that really stand out I didn't want to leave just a plain flesh tone so I deepened the color with an ochre with a yellow ochre that toned in with her skin so it kind of is like a, a fleshy kind of a tone and I'm going to doodle over that with a white pen so it looks like it's overlaid lace which would be gorgeous I'm really looking forward to doing that and now I'm just going to keep deepening those colors so now you can see I'm putting in her eyes I'm using a deep sepia for that and I'm going to just put in some very gentle details for her I'm going to use um, a no-no in the watercolor world where I'm going to mix a pink uh, a white or watercolor pigment which really shouldn't be in the palette but I've got it there with a fuchsia because I want a pale pink on her lips and I want kind of a candy pink um, and you can see as her um, her hair is drying then I'm focusing on different details that aren't really attached to it although you've got to be careful of that eye that left eye to make sure that she's not going to have any of that bleed her eye that I've just put in her pupil um, bleeding into her hair and at this point I'm going to add in some extra details of it with her hair so I'm going to go in with some of the darker tones I've got those base tones in I'm going to go in with some of the darker tones and just put more stroke detail in even out some of the the detail that I've got there you see some fine strokes that I've already got in there already and you know just 
even some of her skin tone out, cover her whole face um, so that I don't have any bleed marks and basically just kind of tidy up her face. Although I do faff around with it a lot. You see it um, in my portraiture a bit where I just play with it and play with it and play with it until I don't. And you, <laughs> you get, you get, you know, really kind of um, cool uh, little features and details and I think those little details make um, portraiture you know often it can be the twinkle in the eye or the nuance in the lips that give every bit of emotion in a face and portraiture and the, you can see that the wings come about quite nicely and I've used quite a different warm tones for that. And I intend to doodle over the top of that as well. And I'm just leaving that to dry for the time being. And now she's got more kind of luster in her hair, I think, and more definition. And we start seeing some of those beautiful tones coming through. So I start with a dry and I've got a, a silver Wink of Stella pen and I thought, yep, I'm just going to add to her. I love to have fairies with glittery hair for some reason. I, whether they've got super luster in their hair or I don't know, it's just something that I like to do. And I will be doing the crown in that later on as well. Um, I do like the way that that glitter shows um, and I'm going to keep doing that through all the darker you know parts of her hair um, I like how the darker bits can often look a lot more glossy than the lighter parts of the hair they can often look straw like so you want to give some luster into to the hair that way and I also now I'm using a Stabilo all pencil a black one to just deepen that shadow in between her lips I really like just putting a very gentle line there and then letting it bleed downwards it often works better than just applying watercolor in its own kind of way um, because I, all I have to do is just use a fine brush to, to activate the edge of it but the top edge stays nice and sharp and that's what I like about that so now I'm going to add more details around the eyes and the shadows and fix up some of the problems with the skin you know sometimes when I'm doing this I'll rub things on with my the heel of my hand and, and my palms and sometimes I just need to fix the skin and that's hard when you're doing watercolor sometimes I patch it up with a tiny amount of that kind of translucent acrylic because the, the watercolor it will cover just slightly better than the watercolor but you're going to make sure that you match the tone and and now I'm just pre-wetting the rest of the background because I'm going to put a blue sky in and so in the original reference picture she was standing in front of this brilliant green background and I kind of didn't want to do brilliant green I kind of wanted her to maybe maybe we're looking up at her from below a little bit and we can see the sky behind her because maybe she's sitting on a flower below but of course you can't see that part of her body so you can't see it so I am using what am I using beautiful I'm using a helio turquoise and that's the main one and then I'm also using a Prussian blue to deepen it in the corners and at the end I will also put kind of a border around that with a uh, blue Stabilo or pencil because I really like to border my pages and I let that wash kind of be a little bit uneven so we're on the home stretch now and I'm using a white Signo pen and I'm cracking out a new one because I, I tend to, I've used up most of all my others and I recently just bought a, a three pack of new ones because it's easier because I go through them so often and I'm going to doodle all over her bodice and I'm going to do like Cornelli work with some odd petals in there and some lace over the top and I love the thought of that. I love the fact that she's wearing something that may be quite be barely there but it does cover her and she's got beautiful form and feature underneath to kind of make it look really really pretty and I just love it's really nice because I've got nice tooth on the watercolor paper 
the pen works perfect it doesn't slide over the surface and it works really really well and I after I've detailed this I'm going to also detail the wings and I've left a few little white bits there here and there and I'm going to doodle in white on the butterfly wings as well. So now I'm starting in with my Prisma pencils and this is a little bit different to a lot of other papers I use because of course it's quite rough. So I make sure that I sharpen my pencils so I can use a nice fine sharp point. And I'm just going to deepen the colours of the eyes. I'm going to give her eyes more luster and depth and have some dark points and some high points. I'm going to pop her eyebrows in. I'm going to deepen some of the shadows, use some blender pencils, use a white pencil to blend, use a blending stump. It all comes into the mix and you can see that I've got a little bit of a bleed down the bottom of her chin there near where some of the dark hair bled into her skin and I didn't notice straight away so I couldn't blot it straight away and then I tried to scrub it out and it did scrub some out but not all out. I also want to make her um, her left eye just that little bit smaller. It's just a little bit too big at the moment. And I think it's dominating the right eye and that's not the intent. I'm going to also increase the size of the iris for the left eye because I think it's just too far over and the eye just needs to be that little bit bigger. So now I'm just adding extra definition with pencils to the hair. I'm adding a few different colours in there so tonally it looks like it's got really variegated colour. Um, and I will just keep faffing around with the face. That's the way that I do things just to make sure that I get those details right. You will be able to see um, all that playing around with the definition and um, using a little bit of acrylic and then maybe using a little bit of gouache over the top or watercolour over the top just to blend it all in as we go through a little bit further.
So after having drawn the crown and her headpiece and then going over that with Wink of Stella Pen, I'm now deciding that I'm going to use more of the black in the wings and add the detail in there. I also am getting back into the white watercolour and I'm putting some clouds in which gives a really interesting kind of look to the page. Different from just say adding white watered down acrylic but I like it. It just gives depth and variation to the background which is really cool. So it's been a while since I've been on here and I must admit I spent kind of all day off and off, off and on doing this girl. It was really nice to kind of sit down and just, I've just been doing that a bit lately, working on some of my girls and ladies and enjoying that process. Uh, you see me just fixing up extra bits and pieces here and all the last minute faffing around that I do just to get her face looking as pretty as I can make it. I really enjoyed this lovely girl. I'm glad to be back on my YouTube channel. I'll be a lot more regular now until February of next year and then who knows what will happen. It'll be on for young and old as I'm doing university full time and I'm trying to meld my my teaching and therapy schedules into that. <laughs> so yeah, I um I'm looking forward to the whole experience. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Ciao for now. It is a little bit of a longer video, but well, learn something new today. It keeps you young. Have a great day.